This is Steve Zeltzer with Workweek Radio and LaborNet. I'm here at the IGF uh, registration, uh, and we're going to be talking about the issues that face uh, people about democratic rights of communication and the public. So, are you going to introduce yourself? Well, um, uh, I know about some some cases, for instance, in our in our country, uh, in regarding the, the rights of communication. Um, so typically we talk about the rights of those who are already connected and, and, and what we do in, 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 in our community is like uh, finding ways to, to, bring co to bring connectivity to those who are not connected so they can uh, have their voice heard and they can communicate. So yeah, that's that what we do with the Giffinet Foundation. And what are some of the obstacles for people to have the right to communicate and have internet access? Well, I, I would say that the obstacles come from the uh, nature of, uh, of uh, the space where we want to communicate, the digital space, they, that is seen as a public space, but uh, it's, it's owned by corporations which sell it as a, as a private product. And then this tension between the public space and the private business is a source of many, of many problems. And can you give examples of how that, uh, that has a problem, specific examples? Yeah, well, you know, you know, in, in many countries, uh, um, probably in all countries, uh, the infrastructure is is owned by the former monopolies, which are now, uh, um, I mean, several monopolies that they decide, for instance, if you are going to have connectivity or not, because you might not be a good business for them, because you might live in a in an isolated area far away, so you are not a business opportunity, so you are not connected, and then if there is no other alternative than going to through them you simply do not have your right because you are not like a, a good business for the, those corporations. So you're saying that privatization of telecommunication has led to uh, discrimination based on the, the profitability of people having uh, this? Yeah, exactly. Profitability defines your opportunities to participate in society. I mean, it doesn't happen so much in the acoustic space. We can talk with each other without paying to anyone. But when, when it comes to, to talk or interact on the digital space, you need to have that infrastructure which is not in nature and you need to, it needs to be built and when the only way to get access to that space is through a company, then uh, it's like a toll road. You need to pay to go to a place and if it's the only way, then you are disconnected. And that happens typically with like rural areas in which uh, you, you do not have access to some services unless you are online. But if you are not online, then you, you can not even complain. I mean, it's 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 sad. And privatization of uh, public uh, services and uh, telecommunication. How has that affected Spain? Well, uh, I mean, probably our society is shaped by uh, by the, these um, uh, private services, and uh, and I'm, I mean, uh, we can complain, but uh, apart from complaining. Uh, what community networks do is they 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 pr produce alternative infrastructures, which uh, which uh, depend on the investment on the on the participation of the citizens, and then you can exercise your I mean you you could still complain but also you can communicate, and there's some new uh, conferences or meetings like RightsCom, which are funded by some of these same media companies. What's going on at RightsCom and who funds it and what are the issues uh, that that raises? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, w when you are given a space and the space is defined by someone else, uh, you are given the opportunity to talk about specific topics. And when the agenda is defined by others, of course, you end up uh, discussing what they want. And it's interesting, RightsCon, for instance, uh, it, the former edition was supported by, by companies that have an vested interest in, in your uh, private data, like the typical example is Palantir, which uh, if you search on, on the web, you would find that th their business is, is like uh, it's like farming people, is like ex extracting people um, uh, information and then giving that, uh, that th those results to, the, to third parties, not to citizens. So it's like, a, again, privatization of, uh, of the digital information about our lives. And Many countries now, England, uh, there's an article, uh, there's a film about uh, uh, the welfare system, how the welfare system has been privatized and also they want information about people which is then given to private companies. Is that a concern? 
Well, of course, uh, this is like uh, we were discussing before. This idea of uh, partnership, partnership is between the government and the private companies. It's a form of, of corruption. So you are you are giving a function that is uh, that is part of the that is like a, like a public service, and then it, when it's managed by a private company, this company can be benefit, can take whatever uh, profit from it. But that's that's um, a case of uh, of corruption. How is that corrupt? Well, because the, you, the, the public uh, institutions have an obligation to provide some service, and then um, when it's given to a particular company, uh, and when it generates profit, and when that, that process is not completely transparent, then um, in a sense you are privatizing, um, uh, you are given to someone the opportunity to make benefit from something which probably shouldn't produce benefits. And do you think these issues are going to be addressed here at IGF uh, at this conference? Well, it, depen it depends what how you define addressing. So I think they show they will show up, but I don't think they are going to be solved. I noticed there were signs of Uber and other big companies here. I, I, is, you think this is on their agenda? It's it's around the agenda. Yeah, it's everywhere. It's like uh, ubiquitous. <laughs> so. I mean, at least I, I think all the people that is here is coming because they have hope to discuss and understand. Uh, not sure about acting uh, uh, effectively to change those things. Uh, so th th there is a lot of uh, push to, uh, let's say, to react to those uh, ch challenges. But uh, but the pity is that the, cap the capital is behind the others, and and capital nowadays is very powerful. Okay, can you introduce yeah. can you introduce yourself? Introduce yourself. Oh yeah, my name is Leandro Navarro and I, I come from a, no, a non-profit organization called Pangea, which is a member of APC and I also work at the university at the Technical University of Catalonia. Okay, thank you.